Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. You know who it is. And it's Grammy, Grammy season, season again. again. The awards, the stars, the lights, the talent, the action, the disappointments. It's all coming your way in February 2024. But for now, what we have uh, today is the full nomination list. This will be the 66th Grammy Awards ceremony, which, I mean, after so many, they have to get it right at least once. Fingers crossed that this is the one. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to look at the nominees list here and let you guys know what I think of the picks, who I think is uh, likely to win, and who I have my fingers crossed for. All right, scrolling down on the official Grammys site, starting off big in the general field with record of the year. Okay, John Baptiste with Worship. We have Boy Genius, Not Strong Enough. Miley Cyrus with her hit Flowers. Billie Eilish with the Barbie track, What Was I Made For. Uh, Victoria Monet in the mix, interestingly. Vampire, Olivia Rodriguez. Rodrigo, anti-hero Taylor Swift, Kill Bill by SZA. Honestly, there's quite a few songs this year uh, on this list that I enjoyed. I loved the Billy track. I loved the Kill Bill track. I loved... Um also on top of it not strong enough personally because of its speed its momentum and its high drama and strong vocal performance i'm gonna go vampire i'm gonna go vampire i'm hoping vampire although i would not be disappointed at all to see this go to SZA or go to especially boy genius however given their popularity and just the grammy's general you know bias toward that or, or occasionally you know given that a lot of artists vote in these categories and john baptiste does tend to be kind of an artist's artist uh, could go to him but i could also see it kind of you know falling into uh, Billy's pocket or Taylor's as well. Moving on from there, we have album of the year, John Baptiste again, uh, the record Boy Genius. Damn, another Boy Genius nomination. Uh, Miley Cyrus again, Lana Del Rey's new LP, Janelle Monet, uh, which I thought was pretty underwhelming but pretty uh, cool to uh, see Monet nominated over here. We have Olivia, we have Taylor's very mid record Mid Nights, and Sizz's SOS. Out of all of these albums, my personal favorite, the one I reviewed most positively this year, has to be the Lana. Amazing LP. I think it's produced and written very well. I think it's Lana's strongest to date. Would love to see it go to this album, considering how quality it is generally. But it's not an album that is super poppy or super gripping in an instantaneous sense. So, I mean, I could see it going to another artist whose sound and catalog is a bit more accessible. Probably the Taylor, probably the SZA, or probably the Olivia Rodriguez go as a result of that, which, uh, you know, kind of uh, second tier pulling for Olivia or SZA in that sense. And I think the chances of it, uh, you know, going to one of those two or Taylor are probably pretty high. Song of the year. Uh, we have A&W from the Lana record. We have Antihero again, Butterfly uh, from John Baptiste. Uh, Dance the Night from Dua Lipa from the Barbie music album. Uh, we have Flowers. We have Kill Bill. We have Vampire. And What Was I Made For again? I guess focusing in more on the songwriting aspect of things and not focusing as much on the performance or the production. Um, I'm probably going to pull for a w or Kill Bill on this one. And I don't know, just fingers crossed that it's going to go to one of those two. I mean, Kill Bill has been one of the biggest songs of the year, so I wouldn't be surprised to see SZA uh, kind of wipe the floor or at least walk away with a few Grammys this year. All right, who is in the best new artist category? We have Gracie Abrams, Fred again, Ice Spice, Jelly Roll, Coco Jones, Noah Khan. On, Victoria Monet and the War and Treaty. I mean, given her virality and meteoric success, I'm kind of feeling like it's going to go to Ice Spice. And honestly, I wouldn't really mind that either out of all of the artists in this list here. I've personally found her progression and a lot of the tracks that she's come out with uh, over the past year to be the most interesting, but also would not be disappointed to see it go to Fred again as well, who has, you know, kind of proven himself to be a, a super producer over the past year or so. But simultaneously, uh, artists like Noah are kind of defining this like new wave of country artists that have a more raw and rustic sound. And it would be interesting to see it go that way too. All right. Producer of the year, non-classical. I mean, Jack and Antonoff. When 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 have we not seen a Jack Antonoff nomination for every year that he's been putting out, you know, good and popular work? He's he's always on these nomination lists. And that 1975 album was uh, especially good and, and one of my favorites from them. Uh, also, the Lana record, of course, uh, Taylor Swift, too. Uh, moving on from there, we've got uh, the Victoria Monet record that has nomination behind it. Uh, we have uh, all the stuff that Hit Boy did this year. Metro Boomin did this year uh daniel uh nigro as well 
Daniel's done some great stuff this year, not only with that Olivia record, but I also enjoyed his work on the Caroline Polachek LP too. Honestly, given that I've been digging Jack's stuff, especially this year, I wouldn't mind seeing it go to him. You know, I'm sad to say songwriter of the year category, uh, while we do have a lot of hits compiled between everybody that is nominated this year, uh, I, I feel like a lot of these tracks here account for some of the most generic pop, country, reggaeton, and rock uh, that I've heard in 2023. I, I don't really have a horse in this race, to be honest. I feel like I'm going I'm to pass on this category. Yeah, I just really have uh, no clue as to where this is going to go, frankly. All right, moving into the pop and dance and electronic music field, what do we have? Best pop solo performance. We got Miley. We got Doja. We got Billy. We got Olivia. We got Taylor again. Frankly, as far as like the pure, catchy, infectious essence of pop music, as far as that goes, I feel like the Miley track is possibly the best representation of that. However, I wouldn't be surprised to see it go to a more low-key cut like Taylor's Antihero. I think there's a bit more substance on the lyrical end going on there. And personal favorite out of the bunch, it's got to be Vampire. Best pop duo or group performance, uh, Miley and Brandi Carlisle with A Thousand Miles. Uh, Lana Del Rey, Candy Necklace uh, with John Batiste on the track, which was pretty great. Uh, Labyrinth, Billie Eilish, Never Felt So Alone, Karma, uh, Taylor Swift with the version that has Ice Spice on it that was very mediocre and not that interesting. Uh, Ghost in the Machine, SZA with Phoebe Bridgers. You know, I'm going all in on the SZA and Phoebe Bridgers, honestly. Like, really good track off of SOS. I want to see it go there. I don't want to see it go anywhere else. Okay, best pop vocal album, new Kelly Clarkson, new Miley, new Olivia, Olivia, Ed Sheeran Subtract, Midnight's Taylor Swift. Uh, I'm going Olivia, full Olivia. The songwriting, the production, everything on that record, front to back, more exciting, more thrilling, more interesting. Best dance or electronic recording. Ooh, we have the new Aphex Twin EP in the mix. That's cool. The new James Blake album, which I liked uh, quite a bit. Disclosures, very underwhelming new record that I don't really feel like added a whole lot to their catalog. The new Romy and uh, Fred again. That's pretty cool. And uh, Rumble. Rumble, Skrillex, Fred again, Flodan. I mean, it would be amazing to see an award finally go into Richard D. James's pocket, frankly. But I mean, my personal favorite out of this bunch probably has to be the James Blake track. But like one of those two, that's who I'm uh, pulling for. Best pop dance recording. Uh, we have uh, David Guetta, Don't Even Get Me Started with that Coil Array track. That is awful. Calvin Harris and Ellie Goulding, Miracle. Uh, that Kylie Minogue track was weak too. Uh, oh no, B.B. Rexa and David Guetta. Da David is nominated two times and Rush with Troy Sivan. Uh, that last track was my favorite of the bunch. Um, and while it's not the best dance track I've heard this year, um, and out of that grouping, I, I would rather go with that. I feel the rush. All right, best dance or electronic music album, James Blake, Chemical Brothers, Fred Again, uh, KX5, Skrillex. I I'm going James Blake. It's James. It's James. I mean, he literally went in more of a dance direction for this LP. What more do you want? All right, field two, rock, metal, and alternative music. What do we got? Best rock performance. Arctic Monkeys. No, I fell asleep to that. Black Pumas. Uh, that isn't, that's like more of a soul thing, but I mean, I suppose. Uh, Boy Genius, not strong enough. Rescued Foo Fighters. Lux Eterna from uh, Metallica. A personal favorite out of this bunch. Pro probably not strong enough, even if it's like not the most rocking uh, on this entire list. But yeah, I'm, I'm pulling for Boy Genius, even if maybe I'm uh, sensing there's going to be some Foo Fighters or Metallica bias going on here. Best metal performance, Disturbed, Bad Man, no, Lord, no. Phantom of the Opera, Ghost, uh, 72 Seasons, Metallica, Hive Mind by Slipknot, and Spirit Box with Jaded. I I'm, I'm going to go Ghost just for the camp factor, just, just just for the silly factor, just for the silliness. I'm going to go Phantom of the Opera. Best rock song. Uh, we have uh, Angry from the Rolling Stones. We have uh, the new Olivia Rodrigo ballad of Homeschooled Girl. That track kicks ass. Uh, Emotion Sickness from Queens of the Stone Age. I like that one a bit too. Not Strong Enough Again, Boy Genius, and uh, Foo Fighters, Rescued. Um, I would love to see Queens or Boy Genius walk away from this one. Even though I did enjoy that Foo Fighters record quite a bit, I, I just feel like Queens and Boy Genius Genius just bring a bit more personality to the table. Um, you know, the Olivia track is good, but she's, uh, you know, most
most likely going to wipe in all the other categories. You know, why not give it to Boy Genius or Queens of the Stone Age here? Best rock album, uh, Foo Fighters. Okay. Greta Van Fleet, Metallica, Paramore, Queens of the Stone Age. A personal favorite out of this bunch, uh, merely going off of the reviews that I've given, is handily the Paramore record. Really great grooves, performances, guitar work, and post-punk vibes all over that album. Even if Paramore isn't going into this category with the most notoriety and and I, I definitely think like there's going to be a slant toward Foo Fighters on this one, you know, again, given their name, but also given the very kind of personal background of that record for Dave Grohl and company. Um, yeah, I mean, there is a likelihood that there's going to be a slant toward that, but I, I still think Paramore made the strongest LP here. Best alternative music performance. Hey, Always is in the mix. Arctic Monkeys is in the mix. Boy Genius is just getting nominated left and right. Uh, but I, I guess because they kind of, you know, work into so many different different categories, which is interesting for them. Lana Del Rey and Paramore 2. As far as this one over here, I personally would um, head more into A&W or This Is Why territory. Those are the ones that I favor, but I wouldn't mind seeing it go to Always, given that they haven't really been nominated in anything else. Although I don't really know what the general awareness is of them and their music, you know, in, in, in on the Grammy scene. But given just how much of an industry commodity they've been over uh, the past year, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Boy Genius get it here. Best alternative music album, we are going Arctic Monkeys, Boy Genius, Lana Del Rey, Gorillaz, Cracker Island, and PJ Harvey. Personal favorite out of this bunch, Lana. Would love to see it go to Lana. Wouldn't be surprised, though, to see it go to Boy Genius or even Gorillaz. Field three, R&B, rap, spoken word, poetry. What do we have? Best R&B performance, the Chris Brown record, the Robert Glasper record, Coco Jones, Victoria Monet, and SZA. It should go to SZA. Best record, most consistent record, uh, most likely will go to her given her notoriety. I think it's going SZA. Best traditional R&B performance. Let's see. We have Babyface with Coco Jones again. Uh, Kenyon Dixon. We have Victoria Monet. We have PJ Morton uh, featuring Susan Carroll and uh, SZA Love Language. SZA again. I want to see a SZA win on this one too. Best R&B song. Uh, I'm going SZA again. I love the hell out of Snooze. If you guys follow my content, you know how much I'm into that track. Uh, I even did a funny little uh, Instagram cover of that song that turned out pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'm going SZA one more. It looks like so far SZA could be just like wiping the whole R&B category. Best progressive R&B album, which is the Grammy field they made for more left field R&B records, I suppose. Uh, which I guess SZA, despite being one of the biggest and most mainstream albums of the year, <laughs> also somehow fits into this category, which just goes to show how little this category makes sense but uh, the Janelle Monet is in here as well as the uh, Terrace Martin record the Diddy how is the Diddy album in the progressive this category was made for more alternative and underground artists in this field to begin with and now we're circling around and throwing Diddy in here what is going on why did the Grammys even do this god well I, I I hope that it goes to SZA because best record in the bunch I guess best R&B album I am hmm interesting okay so the SZA did not get nominated here out of this bunch, I would maybe go Victoria Monet or Summer Walker, honestly, even though I wasn't really crazy about either of those records, but I, I think they're the strongest in the bunch. Best rap performance, ooh, Hillbillies, uh, Baby Keem and Kendrick Lamar, uh, Black Thoughts Love Letter, Drake and 21 Savage, Rich Flex, that's a fun one. Uh, we have Scientists and Engineers, Killer Mike with Andre 3000, and uh, Coil Ray's Players. This is honestly not a bad bunch. This is not a bad bunch at all. I got a lot of enjoyment out of all of these these tracks collectively, even the Coil Array track, but the one that I think has like the most skill, artistry, substance, depth, I would probably go Killer Mike and Andre 3000 and leave it at that. Best melodic rap performance, we have a Burna Boy, we have Doja Cat's Attention, uh, which is kind of interesting because I feel like there were better examples of more melodic rap performances on her new record than that. But uh, Spin Bout You, uh, Lil Dirk, All My Life, Love SZA. Um, I'm actually going All My Life. That track has that amazing kind of kids chorus in the background, really strong verses from Cole and Dirk. I would actually love to see it go to that song. And given their respective popularities uh, in the rap field, uh, I, I think the likelihood that they could win is high. Best rap song. Uh, 
we have once again Doja Cat attention. Uh, we have uh, the Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice cut from the Barbie World soundtrack. We have Lil Uzi Vert's Just Wanna Rock, which has been a pretty viral hit this year. Uh, Rich Flex, Scientists and Engineers. I'm going to go Scientists and Engineers one more time, uh, but actually wouldn't mind seeing it go to Drake and 21 too. Okay, best rap album. Here we go. Her Loss, Drake and 21 Savage, Killer Mike's Michael, Metro Boomin' Heroes and Villains, uh, King's Disease 3 Nas, and Travis Scott's Utopia. If we're going purely off of reviews and opinion, I gave the best review to King's Disease 3. I uh, would actually like to see it go there. Given that Nas won a Grammy for a previous King's Disease, uh, the likelihood of him getting another off of the series probably pretty high. But if we're talking purely numbers here, the Drake in 21 and the Travis Scott records like dwarf that album multiple times over, and it's likely going to go to one of those. As far as further nominations that grab my attention, uh, it's pretty cool to see Lewis Cole nominated for Quality Over Opinion in the Best Alternative Jazz uh, section. Also, Best Traditional Vocal Pop Album. Uh, we have the Leve in the mix. Was not crazy about that myself, obviously, but uh, you know that's an interesting inclusion considering that she's had this uh, sudden TikTok come up out of the blue. All right, who is in the country section? Best Solo Country Performance. Please, Lord, do not let it go to that bland-ass cover of Fast Car by Luke Combs. We didn't need it. Just play the original. It's perfectly good. Thank you. Please give it to Tyler Childers or Chris Stapleton or something. Somebody who actually puts some soul into their vocals, please. Okay, best country song category. We've got Brandy Clark with Buried. Uh, we have I Remember Everything, Zach Bryan, Casey Musgraves. Uh, we also have Morgan Wallen. We have Tyler Childers. We have Chris Stapleton with White Horse. Um, I'm feeling I Remember Everything. Maybe I'm basic because that's obviously uh, one of the biggest songs of the year. Um... And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if there's been a country song uh, in 2023 that's gotten as much play as that one has, but I, I think it's a stellar song. I think it's a good duet. I think it's a beautiful tune. Best country album, if we're going uh, just by uh reviews over here loved the zach bryan didn't really get as much out of the laney wilson or the tyler childers which had kind of a very kind of throwback traditional country uh flavor to it i'm going zach bryan and he has been like one of the biggest sudden success stories in country music over the past year or so so i wouldn't be surprised to see him get it you know best americana performance over here i would love to see it go to jason isbell's king of oklahoma that is a killer song and there are so many good songs off of that lp best american roots song and best Americana album wouldn't mind to seeing going to Jason Isbell in the 400 unit again. Going further into field seven, we have Latin, global, reggae, and new age ambient or chant. Uh, we have Tiny, who is actually nominated in the best musica urbana album category. It doesn't seem to be that many nominations in there this year, but uh, there were a lot of crazy forward thinking reggaeton bangers all over that record. Ooh, and best global music performance. It's really awesome to actually see Silvana Estrada. Uh, in the mix on this one as well. One of the best and most just nuanced and uh, touching Mexican folk singers and songwriters that has popped off in the past year or so. Uh, best engineered album non-classical, uh, New Caroline Polachek. That album was produced incredibly well. Uh, new Victoria Monet record, which I thought actually was kind of bland. Uh, the Feist record, which I would not agree with that at all. And there were definitely some, I don't know, lackluster moments aesthetically on the boy genius I, I would go all in on the caroline polachek here we actually have some interesting nominations in the best remixed recording category we have bad bad not good dom dalla totally enormous extinct dinosaurs wet leg and uh terry hunter which um wouldn't mind seeing it go to wet leg on this one that would be such a quirked up grammy win for sure and wait hold the phone neutral milk hotel mentioned and here are the classical fields that i know nothing about and that is pretty much it ladies and gentlemen Gentlemen, uh, my thoughts, my opinions, my hopes, my aspirations, my dreams, hopefully coming true for the 66th Grammy Awards. We will see how the mayhem pans out in February. But for now, those are the nominations. Thank you for watching. You're the best. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up with the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Grammys, Awards, forever.